story time. Come in. Hello, you two. Yeah, good to see you. Hello. In you go. Thanks. For Hello. Welcome to Storytime at your local library. My name's Monica Dullard and as part of the Marjorie C. Ramsey Scholarship, this is my training resource called It All Starts With Storytime. And Storytime in local public libraries is a phenomenal experience for children and their families from zero to six years old. And a dynamic story time can be incredibly welcoming and inclusive. Children come into the space and they feel so confident and they belong. You've got modelling for parents, you've got joyful, animated and engaged staff that have got evidence-based learning and to make the story time such a, a wonderful experience for children that come into your public library. And gross motor skills and it's so lovely and so important that they're here. Any early years program begins when your audience are there at the door waiting for you and it's important that that is a really welcoming, friendly environment right at the door, especially if you have new families to direct them into the space. They always say good day, when trans get up in the morning, they always say good day, they say ding, 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 ding is what they say, they say ding, 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 ding is what they say. What about fish when they get up in the morning, they go bleh. I think that the library in any community is a space that children and families can feel that they are safe, that they are welcome and that they can be inspired toward a love of reading. So when you start to plan your story time, there's an opportunity to make sure that it is dynamic and engaging and that you've really thought through what your choice of book is. It might be that you are encouraging the children to, to um, call back at you and encouraging that energy in the room. And sometimes it can feel a little bit silly when you're standing, um, especially if you've got colleagues around, but that is incredibly important because the child then sees that as normal and they will continue to, to find that fun and engaging, but so will the parent because a lot of parents feel very uncomfortable and feel like they don't know where to start with reading. And really starting with reading is this kind of communal experience where there's high energy and excitement it can build confidence for those parents. A staff member reading a picture book out loud to a child just feeds them complex information in such a simple way and their brains develop incredibly well in that process. If you're engaging and dynamic, the children pick up on the language and the words and you can use a great picture in a book to ask them questions like, what's that monster? What colour is the monster? How many animals are in this book? Let's count them. And it's a fantastic way for children to call back to you and tell you what they know. Gooey, chewy, wombat, juice of the We implement the Victorian Early Years Learning and Development Framework across Victoria. And it's a great framework because it speaks to all professionals that work with children from zero to eight. That means it includes Victorian public libraries. And we've had a great response from libraries, particularly the library staff that work with very young children. And their story times are fantastic. They're great fun. Um, parents love them. Family members love them. It's more than parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, all come along to story times. And it's great that the Victorian public library staff have really embraced the Victorian Early Years Framework because it gives them practice principles that can re they can really use to think through and plan their story times. The other aspect of really great story times in Victorian libraries is they're so dynamic. I've witnessed them with my own children, but I've also witnessed it as a early childhood educator, how enthusiastic and really exciting um, story times can be because it becomes quite interactive and you'll see children um, preempting or being prompted by what's going to happen next. And that's a pretty exciting thing for children to be part of. And you even see adults getting in on the story and that's a pretty exciting thing. It's important to have an element of creative play and interaction where the child feels very much in charge of, of their response. And it's very important to bring in some rhyme and some repetition as the development of the different sounds help to develop motor skills as well as literacy. 
So it's really important when families and their children come into the library space that you're very welcoming and inclusive and friendly and engage with them because they could be from newly arrived from overseas or from interstate. So introduce them to other parents and families and they'll tell them where the local park is, who's the best GP, what books they've read. And local public libraries are a phenomenal resource for them to really join in the local community. We know um, from studies and surveys as well as just our own passions that reading and literacy can provide a, a head start in life and young, young people, young children that um, are read to just for 10 minutes a day every day can be up to one year ahead of many of their classmates when they start school. We've just launched in Victoria the new Reading and Literacy for All framework, which is a commitment by the State Library and all public libraries through the Public Library Network to um, work together to make sure that the work that we put in around early years literacy is recognised and also to support us as staff to keep developing and ensuring that we have great new ideas that is based on evidence and sound educational theory to help support young children. So we're going to teach you what opposites mean. So, for instance, this is a very, very short dog. Very short dog. And the opposite of something very short would be something very tall. Very good, very tall. So the opposite of a very short dog would be a very tall, tall giraffe. What is it, a giraffe? One of the practice principles within the framework is about reflective practice and what we see in really dynamic story times is a library staff member that really is thought through why and why not, which book, uh, what their contexts are and have lots of conversations and understand their communities. That way they can really reflect on did that work well? Why didn't it work well? Is there another way of doing this? And that's really important. So I can't stress enough the importance of reflective practice as they're planning their story time sessions. Story times in public libraries are a fantastic way for children to get ready for school. They will learn reading and writing without even realising it because you're going to be using the six pre-literacy skills that helps them develop language, reading and writing skills. And it's a fantastic way for you as a joyful and animated staff member to use songs, rhyme, rhythm, repetition, drawing, craft skills that get them ready and develop their brains. And they'll be ready for school before they know it. Just that genuine warmth and that passion that you have for books can come out before and after the story time. And before you know it, you will have a fan club of story time um, attendees in your local neighbourhood. Hello, how's things? How are you, June? Good to see you. The evidence-based learning suggests that if children in public libraries at the end of a story time program can have a piece of blank paper to draw their stories, it's a fantastic way for them to use their fingers, learn Susan, fine motor skills, tell you about their family, yeah. who they are and where the they are placed in our community and public libraries support that. At the end of a story time session, it's, there's a chance for whether you give out stickers or stamps, maybe to have a, just a couple of moments one-on-one -on -one with each child or with each parent allows you to build up a connection and they're more likely to come back and feel part of that community. Children and their families come into this library and they love it. They love you, they're so proud to be here and they're picking up evidence-based learning along the way that gets them ready for school. So I hope you've picked up some tips today and you can take it back to your own libraries and put your own flavour on it and just use this training resource to help Storytime be such a fun experience in your local library. Thank you very much. Wow. We're ready now, get down very low for this one. We're gonna jump up really high. I wanna see all the babies, all the children here. Yeah. Ready. The children on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. Dad's. The daddies and the granddads go scroll, scroll, scroll. My daddy's scroll and dance. Let's 
sit. Scroll, scroll, scroll. The daddies and the granddads go scroll, scroll, scroll. All day long. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. All day long. When your children go to the big day out, they'll know exactly what to do at the end of a song now. <laughs> jump on the end. It's another early literacy yeah. skill. Yeah.